Okay friends, it's time to get started on our job. One of the first things you want to do is make sure that your cooling system is cool to the touch. You never want to open up the cooling system while it's hot and under pressure. Now let's move over to the radiator cap. Assuming it's nice and cool, press it down, turn it counterclockwise to remove it. Give your radiator cap a quick inspection. Make sure it's still reusable. If it's not, now's a perfect time to go ahead and replace it. We'll set that aside. Okay friends, let's make our way underneath the front of the car. All along this area, there should potentially be a plastic splash shield. Generally for the splash shield, you might find several bolts or even some push clips. Ours is missing, go ahead and remove it. Now that we have the shield out of the way, let's come right over to the petcock, which is located on the driver's side lower aspect of the radiator. We're gonna go ahead and drain all the coolant down into a collection receptacle so we can recycle it properly. To drain this, I'm gonna make sure that I put a hose on it. You can also use a funnel or whatever you might happen to have. Essentially, I just wanna make sure that I do direct the fluid into the proper receptacle. Now we can carefully grab onto the petcock. Generally, you can turn this by hand. If it does not turn by hand, carefully grab some pliers. We'll let that drain into our collection receptacle. Now that we've let that drain, we'll go ahead and close off our drain here. We'll look right up here in the center. This bolt should be a 10 millimeter. If it looks like it's stripped out like ours, I'm just gonna use a twisty socket. I'll remove it and then I'll replace the bolt when I go to reinstall. All right, so now that we have that bolt out of there for the lower fan shroud, the next thing we wanna do is start removing our hoses. You're gonna find in these two smaller hoses, they should have transmission fluid. The larger hose could potentially still have coolant in it. Keep all that in mind for when it comes time to removing the hoses so you can recycle the fluid properly. As you can tell, looking at our clamp, it's completely rotted. With my collection bucket under this area, I'll start removing the hose using a hose pick. We'll just break it free and should want to slide right off. Let's move along to the lower radiator hose. Now let's make our way up along the rear of the fan shroud. You're gonna find that you have a single electrical connector. Squeeze that tab and remove the electrical connector. Once you have it off, make sure you check it for corrosion. To get the connector off of here, typically you're gonna to wanna to use two tools. I'll use a pick and carefully get in between where the squeeze tab is. Gently squeeze on that tab with my pick and then I'll continue by prying it off with a short pry bar. Now that we have the wiring off of the cooling fan, Let's move over to the area where it's mounted to the assembly. We'll just gently pry it out of its locked in position. Let's make our way back up top. We're gonna to start removing our front grill assembly. Commonly, for the grill, you're gonna find that you have three push clips. Generally, for push clips, you just try to get underneath the center aspect, pop up the center, which will unlock it, then you can lift up the rest of it. We'll set those aside because we will be reusing them. OK, 
Carefully remove your grill assembly and set that aside. Now we're gonna start taking off this upper support bracket. For this, you're gonna find that you have the hood latch attached to it. We need to remove the hood latch from the area. To get this off of here, we're gonna remove a few 10 millimeter headed bolts. We'll take that and slide it aside. Let's continue removing this. We'll start right in the very bottom of the center. Remove this 10 millimeter headed bolt, and then we'll move along each side. Now we'll do the same on the other side. Now let's move along to this area. You've got your upper radiator hose that leads directly to the radiator. Squeeze the clamp, slide it up, remove the hose from the radiator. Now, as far as removing the bumper cover, as I had mentioned, there should be a shield that comes across this entire area, which would have other miscellaneous hardware potentially held in place to the bumper cover. You'd of course want to remove all that. As we do, we'll also make our way along to each side. Now, once you have that off of there, on each corner, looking up into the bumper cover, you're gonna find the fog lamp assemblies. Carefully grab onto the wiring harness for that and turn it counterclockwise. Remove the bulb from the fog lamp assembly and give it a quick inspection. Make sure it doesn't look burnt or damaged in any way. Assuming it looks good, carefully set it aside, making sure that you're not gonna cause it any damage. At this point, do the exact same thing on the other side of the bumper cover. Make your way into each of the wheel wells. You're gonna be removing the lower 10 millimeter bolt from each side. Carefully separate that. You'll notice that you should have two 10 millimeter headed bolts, one on either side. Ours has one that's broken. And then in the center, there should be a push clip of some sort. Carefully grab this last push clip out of here. Now that we have this removed, it's gonna be time to carefully remove the bumper cover from the vehicle. Just give it a little wiggle and carefully pull it away. Now with the bumper cover out of the way, let's move along to this plastic area. It should have two push clips that hold it to the support. Just go ahead and grab that inner aspect, pull it out and then remove the entire thing. There should be one over there, ours is missing. Go ahead and break that free.
Now we can remove this plastic area. Now let's make our way to where the horn mounts onto the support beam. We'll use our 12 millimeter to remove this mounting bolt. Now we'll just hang the horn aside, putting no pressure on our wire. Let's move along to removing the top AC condenser mounting bolts. We'll use a 10 millimeter for these. Right. Now we can finish removing the rest of the bolts that holds our support bracket in place. We'll use a 10 millimeter. Remove the support bracket. Now the next thing we're gonna do is move right up to this area. We'll grab this, slide it off. Now that we have that off of there, the next thing you wanna do is move along to this area. If you were to reach along the backside, right along where the engine is, you're gonna find two 10 millimeter headed bolts. Go ahead and remove the pair. Go ahead and set this part aside. Now at this point, we're gonna continue on to removing our two upper fan bolts. Use a 10 millimeter for these as well. Now let's get this one off of here as well. Now we can carefully pull the radiator aside, remove the fan assembly. With that out of the way, go ahead and remove the radiator. With the radiator out of there, let's continue on by removing our rubber mounting bushings along the top you're gonna find that you have two small rubber bushings. Go ahead and spin that around. Along the bottom, you'll have two larger rubber bushings. Set those aside. All right, now it's gonna be time to start preparing our brand new radiator. Looking along the bottom aspect, you're gonna find that you have two fittings. In with the kit, it came with these little hose connectors. On the fitting itself, where the threading is, it's a good idea to use some sort of thread sealant. Just put a little bit on there. Now we can start screwing this on here. We'll bottom it out by hand. Use a 19 millimeter wrench to hold the base, a 17 millimeter to turn the fitting. As I'm turning the fitting, I wanna make sure that this is facing towards the center. double check, make sure it's nice and tight. Do the same to the other one. Let's go ahead and put on our rubber bushings along the bottom of the radiator. You'll look, you'll find one side to be flat, the other side has a little beveled area. This beveled area is gonna go down into the lower radiator support. So you want the flat side up against the radiator. Go ahead and slide it on there and do the exact same thing for the other one. Before we put the brand new radiator in here, go ahead and wipe down any debris that might be in the area. Now we can go ahead and put the radiator into the vehicle. Let's make sure we slide each of those rubber bushings down into their corresponding holes in the radiator support. Press it down as far as it can, make sure it's sitting in there. That feels good. Now we can put on our upper rubber bushings. Let's place this facing down. Let's get our fan installed in the vehicle. Carefully slide it down along the rear of the radiator. 
As we slide it down, you want to be extremely careful not to damage that radiator. Should want to slide right in there. Line up your bolt holes along the top and along the bottom. Now in your kit for the radiator, you're going to find that it came with a whole bunch of these square looking nuts. Go ahead and slide one of them in each of the upper mounting holes here. With both of these started, we can snug them up. Make sure that's nice and tight. Now we're going to take this and we'll put it in position in the vehicle. Goes up around the backside there. Once again, just make sure those rubber grommets are in place as needed. Now we can start putting in our cross member. As we're doing it, pay attention to your rubber bushings along the top of the radiator assembly. Let's press the bolts for our AC condenser into place as well. Once you're sure you have all that in place, continue on putting in your mounting bolts. All right, let's snug them up. Now we can snug these as well. Now we can start resecuring the plastic along the passenger side of the radiator assembly. I'll put in both of my push clips and lock them down. Now we can start reconnecting our horn. We'll just put it in place, start in our mounting bolt and snug it up. Now we can put on the protective plastic. Looking at the back side of the plastic, you're going to find that you have several little push tabs. Line them up with the corresponding holes and slide it into place. Now we can slide our upper radiator hose into position. Slide it in as far as you can against the radiator and tighten the clamp as needed. Make sure that's tightened to the radiator. Now we can start resecuring the bracket for this as well. Now that they're both started, I'll snug them up. Reconnect your overflow hose. We can put on our upper bracket here. Rest it in place, start in all of your mounting bolts before you tighten any of them. Should be one up there. Let's get our hood latch in place. Start in all of your mounting bolts and then snug them up. Now we can follow that cable 
grab onto its little mount here, and then we're gonna put it into its mounting hole. So I'll just reach up on the inside and press it up and in. Listen for a click, give it a nice tug to make sure it's secured in there and it's not gonna fall out. Let's make our way underneath the car and start securing our hoses along the bottom of the radiator. When you're doing this, it's important to make sure you press the flex hose on there as far as you can, and also make sure that you can feel the little bobble area at the end of the fitting. Mine is all the way right here. That essentially tells me I'm on far enough. I'm gonna make sure I put the clamp in between this area of the bobble and the fitting itself. I wanna make sure that if the hose tries coming off, that's gonna hold it in place. Make sure that clamp's nice and tight. Give it a tug, make sure it's secure. Do the same thing to the other one. Let's move along to the lower radiator hose. Slide that in as far against the radiator as possible and make sure you re-secure your clamp. If you're still using your spring clamp, make sure you put it back in the original position. We'll give that a wiggle, make sure it feels secure. Now let's check that petcock, make sure it's nice and snug. Let's make sure we put this little nut inside the bottom of the radiator here, where the lower mounting point is for the fan shroud. Let's hold that up there, should slide right in. Let's start in that mounting bolt by hand and snug it up. Make sure your fan is secured to the radiator. Let's reconnect our cooling fan. Come right over here, we'll plug it into the motor. Listen for a click, give it a tug to make sure it's secure. Speaking of secure, you also wanna make sure that you remount the wire into the fan shroud. Make sure that's secure. Let's carefully slide our bumper cover back into place. Once you have the center in place, continue on with your push tab and start in both of your mounting bolts. Same for over here. All right, now let's snug them up. Now we're gonna make our way to each of the corners. Along the bottom of the headlight assembly, near the fender, you're gonna find a little ridge. And on the bumper cover, you're gonna have an area that slides into that ridge. Go ahead and carefully tug on the bumper cover just enough to slide it over the ridge and press it into place. Now let's make our way down along the corner. We'll get that in place as well. Let's reconnect in our fog lamp bulbs. Make sure it's secure. Now we can make our way down along the bottom of the bumper here. We'll continue by sliding everything in place as needed. Now obviously you wanna make sure you do the exact same thing on the other side of the vehicle and then make your way all the way across the front. As I told you before, a lot of our skid plates were already missing so I can't show you how to put them back up. Let's get our grill on here. Once you have it pressed down into place, continue on by lining up your mounting holes and then insert your push clips. Now we're gonna start filling the coolant. It's important to make sure you use either a vacuum of some sort or even use a funnel. Either way, we need to make sure that we fill it with the proper coolant and make sure we burp out any air that might be in the system. Okay, so now at this point, I've got plenty of coolant inside my filling funnel here. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and hop inside the vehicle. I'm gonna start it up and let it run for a little while. While it's running, I'll make sure that I have the heat in the hot position and I have the blower motor running at the same time. 
I want to continue feeling, making sure that I have heat coming out of all my vents. At the same time, make your way out here and just double check to make sure you have plenty of coolant along the way. Once it seems as though it stops burping out any air from inside your funnel, you should be good to go. Now let's make our way over to the overflow. You want to make sure you have plenty of coolant in there. Generally, approximately halfway up should be good enough. You want to make sure you have plenty of space along the top that's still air, just in case the coolant expands once it heats up. It'll have a place to go. I'll use a funnel, put it right in here, and I'll add some coolant. There we are, approximately halfway up. Now that that looks good, go ahead and close it up. Now it's time to put on the radiator cap. Make sure it's secure. Now the next thing you do before you start up the vehicle is to make your way under the hood to the transmission dipstick. The area that you would add fluid would be right through this dipstick tube. The transmission fluid that you're going to want to use generally is a specific fluid. The fluid that you want to use is considered a TIV transmission fluid. You can either get a specialty fluid or you can even go with a universal. If you go with universal, just make sure looking at the back, it says it covers the TIV fluid. Okay friends, we finished installing our radiator. At this point, you've already bled out the system. You know for sure there isn't any air. Go ahead and take it for a road test. Make sure you have plenty of heat coming out of all of your vents and also make sure you watch that temperature gauge. You wanna make sure it doesn't go shooting up into the red. If it does, more than likely you still have a little bit of air in the system, in which case you wanna make sure you continue bleeding it out until it's completely only coolant. Aside from that, thanks for watching.